Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today for my June check-in for my Project Apocalypse. So this is my series where I'm trying to test out my whole lip collection this year, which consists of around 500 lip products. So I'm doing monthly check-ins, showing you photos of me wearing the lip products, letting you know what I think about the formula and ultimately deciding which ones I want to keep and which ones I want to declutter. So the whole point of this series um, is not to just use my collection. It's also to get rid of the products that I just I don't want to use or I just don't really like. Um, so it's it's a year long declutter. So in the past I've done Colourpop Month, I've done MAC, I've done NARS, I've done High End Part 1, I've done uh, Influencer Brands which was my last month's check-in. I'll link all of those videos down below if you want to watch them. This month is actually Sephora uh, brands that are stocked at Sephora in Australia at least. Now there is some overlap with the different categories. So for example, last month um, I put Fenty Beauty and Huda Beauty in the influencer and sort of celebrity makeup uh, category because I sort of wanted to pad that one out. I knew this month was going to be quite large. And there are some other brands like Marc Jacobs, for example, that I'll be putting in high end part two um, instead of the Sephora month, even though it's exclusively stocked at Sephora, um, just so I can sort of spread out the months a bit better and not have some months where I have to test like 60 lip products and other months where there's only 10. So that's why I've sort of divided it that way. Another disclaimer is that, uh, like I said, this is based on what's stocked in Sephora Australia. So there's going to be a lot of brands that um, we actually have stocked in Mecca, which is our other sort of big uh, makeup store that we buy from. And um, they've got exclusivity to things like Too Faced, Hourglass, Urban Decay, um, things like that, that uh, might be stocked in other Savoras, so I will also be doing a Mecca month coming up soon, which is where I'll be talking about Hourglass, Too Faced, Smashbox, um, all those kind of brands. All right, so this month was a hard one for me. Um, not only did I have to get through like uh, 46 different lip products in 31 days, but uh, we had a lockdown for a few weeks um, and we had to wear masks for three weeks of last month. So as soon as you left your house, uh, you had to wear a mask, otherwise you can be fined. So it was hard to sort of test a lot of lip products, especially the creamy lip products that um, transfer onto masks. Uh, also, I got uh, sort of knocked in the lip by my toddler and I had um, a sore lip for about a week. So if I put anything that wasn't like a lip balm on, it would crack and it would bleed. So I ended up having to take like a week off. So because of those reasons, I didn't thoroughly test every single shade here, but you'll see, for example, here, I've got um, a whole bunch. I've got 12 Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipsticks. So even though I didn't test every single shade, I at least tested a good handful of them. So I have an idea of what I think about the formula. All right, the first brand I'm gonna talk about is Bite Beauty, and I do have a bunch of their lipsticks and one of their lip treatments. This is the Agave Lip Balm. Now I know that this, I think this was reformulated. I think this is the original one. I've had it in the back of my drawer for ages, unopened, and I thought, look, I'll get around to using this when I've used up some lip treatments. Um, but, so it was the first time I tried it this month, and I'm, look, I'm on the fence about this. I, I understand that if you've got really dry lips, it might be really good because it's very thick and it is quite nourishing, but this is really thick. Like this pulls at your lips and it tugs when you're applying it because it's so thick and um, it's not, it doesn't have a slip to it. It's got a, like a tug. Now it does leave behind a nice layer of lip product. It's quite thick quite nourishing. This is the type of thing that I would reach for if I had really chapped lips or um, if I've done like a big lip swatch day. So I am actually going to keep this just because, you know, it's useful and I can use it as like a nighttime treatment. Um, but it's definitely not the type of product that I'll just put in my handbag and throw on um, throughout the day because this does take a bit of effort and a bit of tugging and it is quite thick. I just don't really like the feeling during the day. So uh, I'm going to keep it to pan it. But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not in love with it. Now, unfortunately, um, my sort of feelings of not loving it do also apply to their lipsticks. Um, these are the Amuse Bouche lipsticks, which were super, super popular um, and super raved about over the past few years. And I sort of I think I tricked myself into thinking that I really liked these. No, I didn't, I didn't trick myself into thinking I really liked them. I knew I didn't love them, um, but 
I, I thought, look, if I keep trying them, there's going to be something where it clicks and all of a sudden I'm like, oh yeah, I get the hype. I understand why people love these. Um, and it looks like I've got heaps of them and I do. I've also got a mini here. Um, I do have quite a few of them. I've got 10 full size and one mini. Now, full disclosure, I was sent a set of these um, through Beauty News. So I didn't buy these. I think there was a set of nine that was released. They're limited edition colors. Uh, they're no longer available. And then also I was given one um, by a subscriber a while ago. And this came, I think, in a Sephora sort of mini favorites pack thing. So technically the only one I did buy was the mini and it wasn't like I picked the shade. It was just in a mini pack. So I'm going to read my notes about the formula of these in general. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each shade and let you know roughly what I think about it and which ones I'm going to keep. So I said that in general, I just don't understand the hype of these. I've seen um, people review them and say they're the best lipsticks in the world. I've seen uh, blogs and stuff give them like A plus reviews. I yeah, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I've never understood it. And I do understand that uh, how products work on your lips or on your face uh, has a lot to do with uh, not only personal preference and what you like and what you're comfortable with, but also your body chemistry. I do have oilier skin. I don't have dry lips. The only time I have dry lips might be um, when I've, uh, you know, swatched my lips too much and wiped them too much or if I'm sick or something, but it, generally my lips are quite uh, hydrated and I don't have any dry skin or any dryness whatsoever. So, so I'm sure there are people that love these because they work well on them, but they just don't work super well on me. So I said that with the formula, it's super thick and it's very creamy and pigmented, but it has this waxy feel to it. So again, similar to the balm, there's a bit of like tugging and like waxiness uh, to these lipsticks, which I'm not used to. I, I use creamy lipsticks. I use pigmented creamy lipsticks on a daily basis. Um, I, I don't have any problem with a shiny lipstick or a creamy lipstick, but these feel thick and they feel waxy. So instead of a normal creamy lipstick that sort of feels like it works well with your lips and sort of settles with your lips. This is like the equivalent of when you see someone with really cakey makeup on their face and you go, okay, that foundation is not melding with your skin. It's like sitting on top of your skin and looking really obvious. That's what I find about this formula. I just feel like it sits on your lips and um, just looks really heavy. Also because these are a thicker formula and they don't glide on the lips easily, I do feel like getting a nice precise lip line is quite difficult, um, especially with the darker shades. It takes a bit of effort um, and it's just, again, not something I can be bothered reaching for on a daily basis, um, especially since I don't think these wear as generally as well as I would like. I did say that I don't mind these when they're worn down a little bit or um, blotted down quite a lot. So I will actually have a photo of the shade Star Anise, uh, a comparison of when it's freshly applied versus blotted down a little bit. Um, I much prefer the blotted down effect of it. And I hope that photo shows you how these look like they are quite heavy on the lips. They don't look nice and incorporated into the lips. It just looks like it sits on the lips and that's not something I enjoy. Also, these have like, they're notorious for transferring because they do sit on the lips and they never set down. I also have some uh, creamier lipsticks that even though they apply really creamy and they feel creamy on the lips, they have an element of setting to the lips. So they don't set like matte or anything, um, but they just sort of set and stay on the lips. These just sort of want to smear. So they're not my favorite and I'm only going to keep the shades that I really like. Um, and there was a part of me that was thinking of getting rid of all of these because I have such an issue with the formula. Um, I will have swatches on the screen of the range that I have. The vast majority of them um, are the one collection that I got in PR. Um, I don't remember what the collection was. It was some spice sort of collection. And then there is a dark like cherry shade or dark berry shade and also a dark green. Those two are the individual ones that aren't part of that collection. Uh, another thing I'll show you with swatches, when I tried to remove these with soap, uh, they didn't actually want to remove. And that shows that even though these are creamy and that even though these are, um, they do transfer because they have that waxiness to them. I feel like these have a high level of wax uh, compared to other lipsticks. 
they just repelled water. So um, yeah, they transfer, they're sort of hard to remove. Um, if you smear them, it's sort of hard to remove. It's, it, they're, a, they're a bit of a fickle formula. All right, so that's my thoughts on the overall formula. And I think if I had to grade them, I'd probably give them something like a C. Uh, they're, they're usable and they're fine. I just I just don't want to reach for them too much. Um, but let's go through the shades and I'll tell you which ones I'm keeping. Uh, the first shade is Star Anise. I actually have two of these for some reason. I have no idea why I have two of these, but this is a greyish um, shade. And I, I like the shade in theory. Um, it's one of those unique shades that can look really gorgeous with certain makeup. I don't know. I haven't figured out which makeup suits this yet, but I know that when it does suit, it looks quite good. But similar to when I showed this on the screen before, um, I much prefer this on a daily basis uh, blotted down or worn down because it does look quite thick and heavy on the lips. The color is a little bit jarring for my skin tone, but when you blot it down a little bit or if you just tap a little bit on and just sort of blend it in, um, this is a nice cool toned nude. So I am going to keep one and get rid of one because again, I've got two. I don't need two. Then I have the shade Toasted Cardamom and this is more of your sort of typical rosy nude. The thing I like about this shade is it almost has equal parts rosy, peachy, and brown. So it's quite a neutral shade and you can pretty much wear it with any makeup look. So again, even though I don't love, love, love the formula, I feel like especially with the nudes, you can apply less of these and they don't look patchy. So um, I, I will keep this one because I do like the shade. One that I didn't get to test in a wear test and I'm really sort of bummed because I don't know how I feel about this shade. It's the shade Lit Turmeric. Now, this is a really, really orangey, peachy shade, which I would like as a blush. I think this could be a really cool shade, but I just don't know if it's one that I'm gonna reach for. But I didn't have, a, have time this month to actually do like a wear test on this and wear it during the day. So this is one that I'm gonna put in the maybe pile at the moment. I'm really unsure about that one. And if I had another day, I would have tested that one, but you know, it is what it is. The shade Pink Salt is a nice sort of mauvey pink nude. Um, again, look, this is a pretty one. I think if I loved the formula, I would be more than happy to keep this. But as it is, keeping a few I'm sort of battling with because I know I don't love the formula. So I'm going to decide, even though that's a pretty shade, I'm going to move on. I, I'm sure I have other colors like that as well. Smoked Zata is this really gorgeous dark brown. Um, now... I've actually come across a few dark browns in this month alone. So I've got a few to choose from and I don't need all of them. I do like this tone. It's a really, it's sort of like a deep brown with a little bit of rosiness to it. So it is quite a nice flattering dark brown. Again, I would consider keeping it if it was a better formulation. Then I've got a couple of reds. So we've got uh, Crushed Chili and uh, Hot Harissa. Now, these are more of the dark sort of muted reds um, and they're not the type of reds that I historically wear a lot of. They're very pretty reds. Um, I have nothing personally against them, but I feel like I already have shades like this. And from testing my collection out so far this year, I know that I've got shades like this in better formulations. So even though they're pretty, I'm not going to use them. Then we come to the shade Saffron Fire. Now, this is definitely a me shade. It is a vibrant, slightly red toned orange. So it's sort of on the verge of, is it an orange toned red? Is it a red toned orange? I would say there's more orange in it than red, but it is gorgeous. So if you like something like Mac Morange, this is sort of that kind of vibe, which is my jam. I love these shades. So of course this was one that I was going to pick out and try to do a wear test on. In the past, I've had some mixed feelings about this. I know there's been times um, where I've used it and it's sort of transferred off and smeared a bit because it is that sort of creamy formula that sits on top of the lips. But when I wore this this month, I really, really enjoyed it. So not only did it look stunning and bright on the lips, I actually wore this with a fairly minimal makeup look. It was just a way to sort of um, give a punch of uh, vibrancy, which I really like. It looks quite fresh. So I've got on the screen me, uh, this is sort of freshly applied. Uh, it looks really vibrant, really gorgeous. Uh, and then I've got it throughout the day. So I'll have uh, the hours where I wore this. Uh, there's a photo of me like wearing it after lunch and it still looks nice. It's not as 
bold and as opaque as it was when it was freshly applied but it sort of fades down evenly. This is about at the six hour wear mark and you can see that it sort of fades down to look more like an orange tint or an orange stain on the lips. So I've got no problem with lip products fading down. Lip products definitely don't need to look opaque and bold throughout the whole day. Um, but I like them when they sort of fade down evenly. So for example, something goes from being bold to slightly more sheer to a bit of a wash of color, but it doesn't look patchy or it doesn't have areas where like the outer rim is bold and then the inner rim is there's just no product there. That's when you can tell that a lip product has faded off and it looks a little bit tragic. When a lip product fades down evenly um, and it looks good at all stages, that's what I like in a lip product. And that's what this did this month. So I'm going to keep it for now. One shade that I was sort of keen to keep based on the day that I did all the swatches, um, but I'm not going to keep because after I did a wear test, I was like, look, I don't, I don't love this. So the shade Licorice, which I have a little mini of, I was tempted to keep when I first did the swatch photo, I was like, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous effect. So essentially this is a really gorgeous, dark, glossy, like black and cherry lip. Now I don't wear those lip colors often, so I really don't need many of them, but this just gave a really gorgeous, stunning effect on the lips. This shade does stain, so it was the only one out of the whole range that when I was taking it off after swatching, it did leave a stain effect, but I don't have a problem with those because again, it sort of helps it wearing down, uh, looking a little bit more uniform rather than looking patchy. So I've got a couple of photos on the screen, one in sort of, uh, sunlight so it looks a lot more red toned and then one um, in sort of studio lights and it looks a lot more sort of blackened. Um, yeah I don't mind either of those but the reason why I ultimately decided to not keep this is because um, after about four or five hours wear it did wear off quite patchy and it did feel quite chunky so it wasn't one that just wore off very evenly, even though I did like the effect of this initially. The last shade is Kale, which is a really interesting, really, really deep sort of green, uh, almost dark, dark teal tone. Now I don't mind these tones. I think they're really pretty. Um, but again, with this sort of formula that can wear off quite patchy, Firstly, it's a shade that I'm not going to wear often. I might wear it like once a year. So I don't think it's enough to keep it. And also I, I prefer these tones when they're a bit more vibrant. So for example, I'm wearing a purple today, which is a shade that I'll be talking about later. And it's not a dark, dark purple. It's more of a vibrant purple. So I like these sort of teal shades when they're a little, when they're a little bit deep, but also quite punchy and bold. Whereas this one is definitely more blackened. Um, and it's just one that I, I can't imagine myself reaching for too often. So um, cool color, but um, I'm, I'm not going to keep that one. All right. The next big category of lip products that I have is the Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipsticks. These are matte. Um, and I did buy all of these. I didn't buy every shade individually. Um, I did buy probably a handful of them. I picked the shades and then all the rest of them came in a pack. So I think they had a really like discounted pack of like seven or eight of them. So that's why a lot of these um, I bought, but I didn't actually pick the shades myself. It came in like a variety pack. So these are funny products. Um, they're your typical matte liquid lipstick. They go on quite opaque. They dry down to a matte sort of budge proof finish. They do feel a little bit dry on the lips, but I also think that they vary from shade to shade and I didn't get to test every single shade out. I tested the majority of them, but overall I quite liked using these and I really didn't mind them and they had some really nice colors. So again, I'm on the fence about some. There's some that I definitely want to keep and then there's some that I definitely want to get rid of. And then there's the majority of them that I'm just not sure, like how often am I going to reach for these? Like I don't wear liquid lip products too often and I do have better formulas, but they do have some really nice shades. They dry down matte, budge proof, they last a long time. They generally fade down nicely with the exception of some shades wearing off on the inner portion of the lips and leaving that sort of... Uh, lip line effect. I also said that these do develop in color over the day. So when you see these um, in the tube or when you first swatch them or first apply them, they look a lot lighter and then throughout the day they get sort of deeper. So these are a pretty standard formula of liquid lipstick. So if you think of liquid lipstick and you go, oh, they're too matte, they're too dry. 
These are going to be that, but they're not the worst. They're not the driest. I've had other li liquid lipsticks that crumble off your face and that feel really uncomfortable. These are just pretty standard, but these were created pretty much at the start of the liquid lipstick trend. So the formula is quite old um, and it doesn't, I don't think it's got that sort of innovation and that hydration that a lot of current um, liquid lipsticks have. So it's just a matter of keeping the shades that I will want to keep using. Um, and then at the end of this series, I'm going to do swatch comparisons with similar shades and then make a decision that if I have like three shades like this, do I want to keep this one? Yes or no. So, so I'm actually going to keep a few more of these than I was originally expecting to. Um, but that's just because I want to make sure that I'm not getting rid of a shade that uh, is fairly unique to my collection. So um, yeah, that's that's why I'm keeping a few of these. All right, so there's a swatch photo on the screen and you can see that I've got a light nude, a couple of deeper nudes, a couple of sort of pinky berry tones, reds, orange, pink, purple, and a sort of metallic dark teal. So the first shade is Stripped. So this is a light nude. When I did first do the swatch photo and I applied this, I thought this was going to be way too light for me and something I didn't want to keep, but it is definitely something that develops over time and ends up looking like a good tone of nude for me. This shade is quite a neutral shade, so it does work with many looks. It's got a bit of peachiness to it. It's got a bit of brown to it. It's got a bit of like almost yellow tones to it. So it's not your pinky pinky nude and I do really like these shades. So again, at the end of this series, when I review all the products that I have kept throughout this year, um, if I find something that's a dead on dupe for this in a better formula, I will get rid of it. But for now, I really like the tone and I did enjoy using it. The next two shades are quite similar. So we have the shade Ashton and Toast. Now in the tube, they almost look the same. Um, but on the lips, they are a little bit different. So Ashton is definitely more of an orange, sort of burnt orange, brownie nude. And Toast is more of a cooler toned brownie nude. So I did do wear tests on both of these and these do wear in a similar way. So you apply them, they look nice and bold. They look quite um, opaque and then uh, they wear fairly well. But then throughout the day after you eat, um, they both tend to wear around uh, the inner portion and leave a darker outer rim, which look is not the worst thing. It just means that you need to go and touch up the inner portion, which you can do. Um, but if you do layer it too much, it can feel a little bit chunky. So this is not my favorite formula, but I do like these tones. Now I do feel like um, historically Ashton has been the one that I've worn more, but I also feel like it's the one that I've got a lot of dupes for already in my collection. So I don't feel like I need both of these, but I definitely feel like Toast is more unique. And also Toast, one thing I like about it is it looks quite brown on me. Um, and I don't really have many lipsticks in my collection that are like a mid-toned brown. Um, this is more like a rosy brown rather than orange brown. And I think this is a little bit more unique um, and something that I can imagine myself reaching for. If I wanted a shade like Ashton, I can already think of different liquid lipsticks that I would reach for because I like the formula more. So I'm gonna get rid of Ashton and keep Toast. All right, now we're talking about the sort of rosy pink shades. Now I've got three of them and they're all quite similar tones. They're all sort of berry pinks. Now, um, the lightest one is the shade Catherine and it's spelt K-A-T-H-R-Y-N, which is my name. Um, and I bought that specifically because it was named the same spelling as my name, which is very hard to find on things. So um, I am automatically gonna keep this one and prefer this one just because of the name. Uh, these two are a little bit darker. So I've got Current and I've got Dazed. And even though they're all really pretty shades, I do think they give a very similar effect. I'll have a photo on the screen of me wearing Catherine and you can see that um, the difference between the start of the day and the end of the day. Of course, the lighting is obviously very different, but it goes from looking like quite a vibrant, um, dusty pink tone to looking almost like a deep berry tone. So I don't think I really need a shade that's any deeper than this before it turns into sort of vampy territory. And I don't really want to reach for these shades to create vampy looks. I kind of like the bright, sort of pinky tones to them. So I'm gonna keep Catherine and get rid of Current and Dazed. One thing I did notice also when I was doing lip swatches of these, the shade Current and the shade, 
uh, Requiem. They both had a different, they were moved in a different way than the others. So um, the others, when I got my my cellar water on um, a, a, like a rag, which is how I removed my lip swatches, um, the others would sort of melt away and dissolve away. These sort of came off in like almost strips, like plastic strips, which to me indicates that they are going to be the type of lip product that wears off patchy. So that was a warning sign that I don't, I'm not gonna like the wear on these. So automatically because of that, I've decided I'm not gonna keep these both because I just know I'm not gonna have a good time with them. Um, but I'll have a photo of Requiem on the screen anyway. So if you wanna see how it looks, it is quite nice. I think it would be nicer if it didn't have the metallic sort of element to it. I feel like that looks a little bit much. Also, I did try to use this as an eyeliner because I knew people were gonna be like, you can keep it and use it as a nice teal eyeliner. Yeah, it, it worked. So there's a photo on the screen, but I found that because you're applying a lip product as an eyeliner, it actually wasn't as opaque and as bold as what eyeliners usually are. Um, it had to be built up a little bit and the more you build it up, the more sort of dry and sort of crusty it can feel. So uh, I'm gonna get rid of these three, the two dark pinky berry tones and uh, the metallic teal. All right, on to oranges and reds. These are obviously tones that I really like and they're also I've I've had a bit of a struggle with these I have worn all of these so I've done wear tests on all of them um, persimmon is the orange shade again this is more true orange it does have a tiny bit of red in it so it doesn't look too yellow I find really yellow leaning oranges make your teeth look really yellow this one has enough red in it that it uh, doesn't look weird with your teeth um, but at the same time it definitely looks orange on the lips. Now I love the effect of this. This again doesn't wear, I feel like I've got shades similar to this that wear better, but I'm not 100% certain. I love the effect of this um, and it does sort of wear down on the inner rim throughout the day, but it, it looks good enough that I'm happy to keep it for now and see if I have any dupes later on. So I'm keeping that one. Um, when it comes to the two other reds, I've got the shade American Doll, which is your more traditional, just straight up, red it's more of a blue toned red but it's it's yeah it's it's a fairly neutral red and then i have the shade seraphine or seraphine and this is more of a deeper blue toned red and this one is really gorgeous this one is hard to get rid of because when you put it on you're just like wow that effect is stunning when it comes to the wear of these i feel like um seraphine wears a bit better because it is more of like a staining, really, really pigmented red. Um, and what this tends to do throughout the day, I don't have any, like I've got a photo of me wearing it, but um, I don't have check-ins because I wore this when I had family over and I couldn't be like, sorry, I know we're hosting a dinner, but uh, I gotta go off and take some progress photos of my lip product. So I didn't do that, but I can tell you that this is a, what I love about this, it's a dark red, but it's punchy. Often you find dark colors and they almost mute the color a lot to get that deep effect. Whereas this is dark, but bold. The color is really, really pigmented and really, really red. But because again, these do develop um, over an hour or two of wearing them, it settles looking quite deep, but it, the, the red just shines through. It's really, really bold and really gorgeous. This sort of wears down, not patchy, it wears down a little bit more evenly, but it can get a bit messy looking. So as you eat, as you wear this, it can start looking a little bit smudgy. Um, it can, like the lip line will start looking a little bit uh, diffused rather than crisp. Um, but I love this. I think this shade's really gorgeous. And again, this is one that I don't want to get rid of because if I don't have something similar to it, i will be really upset that I got rid of it. So I'm keeping that. I'm on the fence about American Doll. I feel like I've this is a dime a dozen type of lip product. And again, it does wear fairly well. Um, I actually wore this yesterday uh, to a family event and it looked nice and bold. This did fade down a little bit on the inner portion, but because it's quite a bold red, um, it still looked pretty good. It didn't look like I've got, you know, a fleshy lip on the inner portion and just red on the outer rim. It did, um, yeah, it faded down, but looked pretty good. And then it was really easy just to touch up the inner portion. So again, not the most comfortable formula. It's a little bit dry, um, but it didn't flake. It didn't 
cause it me any issues. And look, I'm sure I've got heaps of these, but I'm gonna keep this just in case I don't. If I just, for some reason, don't have an awesome standard, like red liquid lipstick in my collection, uh, I'll be, again, upset that I didn't keep this, but I'm sure I've got others that are better. The last two shades are quite vibrant shades. So I've got the shade Karina, which is this really vibrant, uh, warm toned pink. So it's got a little bit more coral tones to it than it does have purpley tones. And I've got the shade Madison, which is quite similar to what I'm wearing today. Um, maybe a little bit more pink um, and it's like a vibrant sort of magenta purple shade. Now I'm going to keep Karina. Karina is fantastic. I think this could be a dupe and could knock out the Jeffree Star, Jeffree What the Fuck from last month that I wanted to find a dupe for. I'm not sure if it's an exact dupe, but it's very, very similar in how it looks on the, li on the lips and how it wears. So I'll do a swatch comparison at the end of this project, but it is a very similar performing liquid lipstick and I really love it. So not only is this a really beautiful vibrant pink, it gives a really cool effect on the lips, but this wears really, really well. I didn't take photos when I first applied this because I was running off to a thing and I didn't have a chance to take photos, but um, I'll have a photo of when I first swatched it so you can see what it looks like freshly applied. And then I have photos from around five and a half and seven hours later, and this still looks Nice. So similar to the Bite Beauty Saffron Fire lipstick, um, this one sort of fades down to looking more like a pink stain. And in fact, this one does stain. And when I took this off at the end of the night, um, it did leave a pink stain on my lips. And some people don't like that, which is totally fine. But what I like about that is it means that this ends up looking like it fades down even more naturally because if the product's worn off at least you have pink stained lips that makes it look even so i really like this i'm definitely keeping it um and yeah it, i think it's my favorite one out of all the liquid lipsticks here this purple shade i'm going to get rid of i actually really like the shade it's beautiful on the lips but one thing i did notice and i did notice this when i um tested out a by terry liquid lipstick in a purple shade a couple months ago um Purple is a notorious shade that it can look patchy if you apply it unevenly. So uh, I think it must be something to do with the pigment. Um, if you apply it, it can look quite vibrant and almost pink. And then if you um, accidentally apply too much in certain areas, it builds up and looks darker. So just by the nature of the color, uh, I don't think it's a formula issue. I think it's just the shade. Um, because it does get deeper as it builds, it means that it looks patchy as it starts to wear off. So um, you can get the effect of looking like dark purple areas and then bright pink areas peeking through as it starts to wear off. Um, and also, yeah, it's just a little bit, I don't know. I, do, I love the color. I just don't like it in a liquid lip format. I much prefer it in a bullet lipstick where you can sort of uh, purse your lips together and move it around and get a more even effect. So I'm going to get rid of this one. I do also have a few other Anastasia Beverly Hills products. I've got two lip glosses. So the big one I have is the shade Kirsten and then the small one, which is just a mini again from a uh, Sephora pack. Uh, this is Toffee. Now both of these look fairly similar. Um, Kirsten is more of a pinky nude, so reminds me a little bit of like Velvet Teddy. And then Toffee is a similar sort of tone, but less pink. So it's a little bit more uh, caramel toned. So these are nice. I've got no problem with them. Uh, I can definitely use them. I can definitely uh, in the future probably use them up. I said they're more of a higher coverage lip gloss um, and they are a thicker lip gloss, but they're not super sticky or tacky. I like the look of these, especially applied quite thinly because um, again, if you apply too much, it can look a little bit gluggy and a little bit heavy on the lips. But I do think if I wanted a little bit more opacity to a lip gloss, um, I like both of these and I can find occasions to use both. So I'm going to keep both. All right, on to matte bullet lipsticks. I've got four of these um, and I don't think they sell these anymore or they've been at least discontinued. I know a lot of the liquid lipstick shades have been discontinued because I've looked for them and they, they don't exist. I've got the shade Latte, Brandy, Rage and Cobalt. Now, these are interesting. I sort of have a love-hate relationship with them, but I sort of want to keep them all. All right, so when it comes to the formula of these, these are very tough so similar to how i said like with the agave lip balm from bite these have a like a tug to them when you're applying them these are like 
matte and dry. They remind me a bit of the Melt uh, ma uh, matte lipstick formula. Um, so these are a little bit dry and tuggy to apply, almost similar to uh, MAC Ruby Woo, the retro matte formula. Those are kind of dry and tuggy. These are also the same. But the good thing about them is once you have them on, they're on. They don't budge. They just stay put and they don't transfer too much. Like I've got have, had this on for a few hours and yes, there's some transfer, but it's not like uh, if I had the bite ones on, for example, you'd see a bold kiss mark, like half the lip product would be off. It's that sort of transferable. This one, again, it's a, it's a bullet lipstick. So there's a little bit more um, comfort to it than a liquid lipstick, but it gives a matte finish. It gives a bold finish and these last really well. The reason I haven't reached for these too much in the past, not only do I have some interesting colors like a purple and a cobalt blue, um, so I don't wear those on a daily basis, but because these are drier, they just take a little bit more effort to apply. But again, once you've got them on, they last really, really well. I like the shade Latte on me. Um, I thought this was gonna be more of a nude, but it is a lot darker and it does apply quite brown toned, um, but I really like it. I think it's a beautiful shade. Um, I, I, I will wear it, I will enjoy it. One that I was, one that I'm on the fence about is the shade Brandy. Now, this one is a very, very dark shade. It's like a dark burgundy shade. When I actually bought this online, I think I was looking at like swatches and lip swatches where it looked quite dark red, but on me, it almost looks black. So I'll have a photo compared to um, the swatches versus how it looks on me. And I think this is like one step down from black. It's not the kind of shade I reach for often, but this wears so, so well. So I wore this the other day and um, it lasted quite a few hours and it almost looked perfect by the time I decided to take it off. Um, I did wear it under a mask for a portion of the day and it still looked great on the lips. It is a bugger to get on and I feel like these this whole range benefits from either using a lip brush or a lip liner to sort of perfect, perfect the lip because it can sort of tug and have a little bit of an uneven lip line when you first apply it. So I didn't wear this all day because um, when I was putting my baby to bed, I was like, I don't want to like kiss him and put like berry wine lip color all over him. So I did take it off, but it did wear hours really, really well. If it wasn't for how well this did last, I wouldn't keep this shade because um, it's not one that I'll reach for too often, but it is quite rare to find a lip product of this color that wears as well as this does. So I'm tempted to keep it for a while, at least to the end of the project and reassess when I do um, swatch comparisons. Um, but the other shades I'm definitely keeping. Now I'm wearing the Rage shade today. So I really like this bright purple. Um, I like it a lot more than how this one looks. Um, this also stains like quite pink. So again, once this fades down, you still have a vibrancy to it. Um, and it just means that it can fade down a little bit more naturally. And even though I don't wear blue lipstick often, this one is awesome. I love the shade cobalt, like just the color cobalt in general. Um, and this is surprisingly flattering for an alternative sort of color of a, your standard lipstick. Uh, and again, it wears pretty well. So I'm, I'm keeping all of them for now. All right, the next liquid lipsticks that I have um, that are stocked at Sephora um, are Pixie lipsticks. These are the Matte Last Liquid Lip. Now, I really like these. I used to have a peach one, but I gave it to my mum. And I was, I thought I was gonna get rid of half of these, but I swatched them all and I, I like them all. So the shades that I have, there's Really Rose, which is more of a mauve pink nude. Then there's Really Rose, which is more of a brighter pink nude. There's Pastel Petal, which is a lighter pinky nude, and Matte Beige, which is more of a true nude on me. Now these don't last amazingly well, but they are really comfortable. And because they are more uh, nudey shades on me, more sort of natural shades, uh, they fade down really, really beautifully. And it's almost like um, you go from wearing sort of a bold, lip through to fading off, fading off, and then just nothing. So these 
are really easy to wear throughout the day and I feel like the colors are really flattering. Um, the, the formula is a lot more moisturizing than say like the Anastasia Beverly Hills ones. So I don't feel like they're as set and as matte and as dry. Um, they do have a little bit of tack to them, um, but I just think the shades are really gorgeous. I normally don't like pinky nudes because I just don't feel like they suit me, but I feel like these tones were picked so well that I can see myself wearing all of them. Another thing I have quite a lot of, this is the whole range, this was sent to me. This is by Ultraviolet, which is an Australian SBF brand. They got some really awesome SBFs and they reformulated their lip balms. Um, I'm currently panning one, the peachy one, um, and it was SBF 30, now they upped it to SBF 50. So we've got peach, rose, nude, and shimmer. Now they all do look quite different on the lips. Um, they're all like a light tint, so you know, it's not a huge difference, but it's different enough. Um, shimmer was the one I actually reached for the most during the project, because during the time where I had the sore lip, um, this was just one that I thought was easy to apply. Uh, it is a clear with a cool, sort of sheen to it, so or shimmer in it, so it does look quite high shine, but it is a translucent shade. Uh, historically, I've used Nude the most because it looks most like my lip color, um, but I also like Peach and Rose. I think they all offer something nice. And again, do I need all of them? No, but throughout the next two years or something, I can see myself using all of these up and then being a really functional product because of the high SPF. I think the two things that I don't love about these um, is that firstly, they have almost like a chemical taste to them and a little bit of like a chemical maybe tingle. And I feel like that might be the SPF, like the high SPF in them. It sort of gives that sort of, yeah, chemical vibe. Uh, also because they're tinted and they've got SPF, they're not something I wear at night. And I usually wear this sort of thicker uh, lip balm consistency at night before I go to bed. So it does limit when I can use this. Another SPF tinted lip product, and I think I actually like this one more. This is Lips, and it's the tinted lip balm SPF 50 in the shade Nectar. Now I've actually used one of these before, um, so I'm not unfamiliar to them. I actually like the, the feel of this more. Both of these are scented. This is more vanilla and this is more maybe like slightly caramelly scented. Um, but I feel like this is just feels a little bit more luxurious on the lips. So it still has the SPF 30. It doesn't take like doesn't have that chemical sort of vibe that this one has. So I feel like this one is one that I'd reach for more. And even though they all sort of do the same thing and I don't need five of them, they are different tones. So this is more of a pink nude. This is more of a purple nude. And this is more of a true nude. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to keep them all. I like them all. I will eventually use them all. A couple of other Pixi products that I forgot to talk about when I spoke about the liquid lipsticks. Um, I've got this peach pout tinted lip balm with vitamin C and I've got this Chloe Morello lip icing in the shade cake. Now these look, I don't know. I like them. I like them. Do I need them? I don't know. All right, we'll start with the lip icing in the shade Cake, and I'll read some notes because I this was the first thing I tried in the month, so it was a while ago. Uh, so I said that when I look at this tube, I think two things simultaneously. Uh, the first is, wow, that's a gorgeous color shift. And the second is, wow, that would be a hideous lip color um, because it does look like it's a gold to pink uh, sort of duochrome effect, and it looks quite bold in the tube. But I know I kept this for a reason because when I did first use this, I, I think I was quite impressed with how it looked on the lips and it looked a lot better than I was expecting. And it did again this time around. So this feels more like a lip oil, not so much like a gloss. So it is quite thin on the lips and it's quite slippery and very, very shiny. Also, because it's got this shimmer in it, it adds a beautiful shine to the lips. It doesn't look chunky or glittery. It just looks like a beautiful sort of wet look shine. Since this is so thin, it does tend to wear off pretty fast. So it is something that I could probably pan pretty fast uh, down the track because you could reapply it quite a few times during the day. But I really like the effect of this. So yeah, it just gives this beautiful, um, the tone is really nice as well because it's got that sort of rosy gold effect. That sort of goes really nicely with your sort of natural lip color. So yeah, really basic and it's just like an alternative to a clear gloss uh, with a lot of shine, but it is nice and I can definitely use this up in the future. I am a little bit more on the fence with this vitamin C peach pout 
uh, lip brightener product. So the claims of this make it sound really fancy, but at the crux of it, it's just a tinted lip balm. So hopefully you can see that this does have like a peachy outer colored layer and an inner core that is what is supposed to be infused with vitamin C. It's got a slight vitamin C scent to it. So it's not like lemon, it's more like vitamin C tablets. So essentially this is like a peachy pink tinted lip balm and it doesn't have much of a shine to it. Like the shine wears down really fast. This is the kind of formula that if it was clear, it'd be like a really great unisex uh, lip balm because I know that um, a lot of guys that I know like a lip balm, they don't want that shine and that layer on it. This sort of gives that almost um, satiny effect to the lip. So it's one of those ones that would be really great to just throw on if you're you know, in your car and you're like, my lips feel a bit dry throw that on and it, it's easy to apply. It, it, it doesn't require too much hassle, getting the color looking nice um, and it's not too sticky and too gross. So there's nothing amazing about it, but it's definitely usable. And again, this might be one I'm gonna keep to pan. All right, let's make the next ones really snappy because I've been here a long time. Uh, the next one that's sort of like a tinted balm product, this is the Benefit Moisturizing Lip Balm in the shade Nude Pink. Um, this is just a nice shade. It's, what, what can I say? It's a nude pink, it's creamy, it's glossy, it's easy to wear. Again, it's something that I can just throw in my handbag and just use organically or pan if I want to, but it's not an outstanding product where I'm like, wow, everyone needs this. Um, but it is quite usable and good for like low makeup days. It has this like apricot scent. It reminds me of um, Sally Hansen Cuticle Balm. My mum used to use that a lot and I sort of used to smell it and it sort of reminds me of her. So there's something about this that I'm like, it's quite nostalgic. This also feels really light on the lips and does sort of wear off quite fast. So if you're having a cup of tea or something, it will wear off pretty fast. So again, one of those products that feel light, uh, easy to apply, looks quite nice, um, but you can probably use up fairly quickly. I've got two mini Tartist lip paints and I've had such a weird experience with these and they are so different that I just don't understand how they're the same range. So this is the shade Birthday Suit and it came in a Birthday Sephora pack. I like the color of this. It's a really nice nude. It applied and looked really gorgeous. But this, okay, there's a couple of things I didn't like about it. One, it has this weird chemical, almost like herbal toothpaste, funky scent that makes me think that it's gone off. Also being a matte liquid lipstick, this didn't set down. It actually, as soon as I ate, this was like completely gone. So not only did I not like the scent and it was like, it lingered and I didn't like it. Like I didn't like the experience. I did like the look of it, but because I think this has gone off and it just never set, it was always a little bit slippery on the lips and wore off almost instantly. I'm definitely getting rid of that. Um, and then I tried the shade Wannabe, which is this beautiful dark chocolate brown. This was a really interesting shade. And um, again, I think if I loved the formula, I would probably keep this, but I do have a lip product in mind that's a, a similar color that I have in my collection. I pr much prefer the formula. This was so, so different to Birthday Suit. This did set down like, dry, dry, dry. So whereas birthday suit was like, had a slip and it just never set, this completely set to like powder, powder dry. So even though this was a drying lip product, um, it was pretty comfortable for a few hours. And then all of a sudden when it started wearing off, it sort of wore off really badly and started to flake off in chunks. So you'd touch your lips and not even like rub your lips. You just touch your lips and there'd be little flakes coming off. And I just, I don't like that. Again, I just don't like lip products that fade off in a really unflattering way because I don't have really much confidence wearing it out in public. And then what's the point of wearing your lip product? And I also have no confidence in, in Tartus lip paints because they are so, so different and they clearly vary so much from um, shade to shade that I just, I, I don't want to touch that with a 10 foot pole. Another lip product that's sort of similar to this um, this is, and I, I knew I didn't like this. Um, this is by Nude Sticks. It's a magnetic matte lip color in the shade Vino. Now I loved this color. I'll have a photo of me wearing it on the screen. I was living my best life wearing this color. This color is gorgeous and I would love to find a dupe in a better formulation. So it's this beautiful burgundy wine shade, but again, it's not too, too dark where it almost looks black on me. It looks almost vibrant, but it's like the perfect, winter autumn shade. I love it so much. 
but similar to the Tartist wannabe shade, this looks great for a few hours. It even wore really well under a mask, but as soon as it starts to go bad, it like craps its pants and goes really bad. So again, this wore off really patchy. It looked really bad. Um, so it might wear like a solid four hours, but then as soon as it starts to get in contact with oils or food or anything like that, which inevitably you're gonna eat at some point during the day, uh, this just like loses the plot. This was actually a really interesting formula as well because being a crayon, um, this applied like a smooth lipstick, quite creamy, and then it's like set budge proof like a liquid matte lipstick. So it had that dry matte budge proof feel of a liquid matte lipstick, but it applied like a lipstick. So it was quite an interesting formula. And if this didn't turn bad after eating, I would keep this. I'm tempted to keep this just to find a color dupe for it because I love the color. This is like my perfect berry, the perfect depth of berry, the perfect tone of berry. I might put this aside to try to like swatch fine dupes for in a formula that I much prefer, but uh, yeah. Unfortunately, formula wasn't for me. Something a little bit similar to that Nude Sticks lip crayon is this Sephora product. This is the lip color last lipstick in the shade Wanted Red number 20. Now I think these have been discontinued, I think, um, but this is also a product, like it's a sort of uh, wind up traditional lipstick in a thinner bullet. And again, this is one that applies like a lipstick, but then it sets down like a liquid lipstick. So it sets down budge proof, sets down quite dry, sets down quite matte, um, but it applies quite creamy. Now the color is quite nice and bold. It's your traditional blue toned red. Um, and I did quite like it, but even though this is more of a unique product, applying like a lipstick and setting like a matte liquid lipstick, I sort of feel like if I wanted a creamy lipstick, I would use a creamy red. And if I wanted a matte setting lipstick, I'd go for a matte liquid lipstick. So I feel like this sort of falls in between and it's sort of forgettable. So even though it's interesting, and I, even though I did like the effect of it, it didn't wow me in how it wore and it was just a standard red lipstick. So I, I really don't feel like I need this. All right, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is this beauty. Uh, it is by Milk Makeup. This wasn't available in Australia, um, but I was luckily gifted it, which was lovely from a Beauty News subscriber. Uh, this is a beautiful lipstick. So this is a collaboration. It was limited edition. It's not available anymore, uh, but it was a collaboration with the Wu-Tang Clan. And this is a pretty bougie lipstick. That's what I'd consider this bougie. Um, when you do look at it, it's like, what the heck? It's heavy, it's hefty. It's got this gold dragon around it. It's like you apply it and you feel like I'm I'm, I'm being bougie today. The color is gorgeous. It's up my alley. It's a really beautiful, vibrant um, orange toned red. So again, this is on the cusp. Is it like red? Is it orange? But all I know is it's beautiful and it's vibrant and I love it. I said that this is an amazingly bright, nice and creamy lipstick. It's not too thick. Uh, it's very comfortable, but it also wears really nicely on the lips. So I'll have photos of me, wear photos. Um, I liked it, I enjoyed it. It's a nice quality lipstick. Um, it is like gaudy and bougie, but like in the best possible way. It's got this nice um, magnetic closure, which I appreciate. Um, this is, yeah, it's a special lipstick and yeah, it, I like it. I'm not gonna get rid of it, I enjoy it. All right, so I think I actually kept a lot more than I was planning to. So for example, I think I was just a little bit overly cautious with keeping things like these Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipsticks, even though they're not super unique. I'm like, just in case I don't have these shades, I may as well keep them. So I think I was a little bit generous with the products I was keeping. I really should have cut down some of these. I do like them all, but do I need them all? Now I did decide that that Bite Beauty Lit Turmeric shade, because I'm keeping too many, I'm going to get rid of that. So yeah, that makes 17 I'm getting rid of and 30 that I'm keeping. All right, I'm interrupting the conclusion to give you an updated conclusion. I've been editing the video. I've been dragging my feet because I had a beauty news video to edit. So that took priority, um, but I don't need to keep as many as I have. I feel like keeping 30 is being too conservative and that wasn't the point of this series. Also, now that I've moved on to the next month uh, of testing products, I've been reminded that I much prefer liquid lipsticks like the Too Faced liquid lipsticks. Um, so why am I keeping so many of these? Why am I keeping so many lip glosses when in reality, 
chances are they're going to go off by the time I get around to using them. So I'm doing an extra cull of this video and I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. All right, let's start with these. Uh, I'm going to keep two. I'm going to keep the nude and I'm going to keep the clear with a shimmer because that's what I like to wear when I'm wearing no makeup. So I'm keeping both of those and I'm getting rid of the rose and the peach. I am currently using a peach. I know what it's like. Um, and I, I, yeah, I'm getting rid of these. It is what it is. I still have the Lana Lips one. So if I want a bit of color, I can go for that one. But I much prefer sort of more translucent or nude glosses like this. I don't need to keep all four of these pixie things. The ones I'm most likely going to use, my favorite favorite is matte beige. I'm definitely keeping that. And then I might keep pastel petal, which is more of the pinky nude. Uh, the two sort of rosy shades. Again, I don't really use rosy shades. They're very pretty rosy shades. It's a nice formula, but do I reach for them over these ones? No, so I'm not gonna keep it. I'm wearing a cool toned lip that I like more than Star Anise. I don't like this formula. Why am I keeping them? I was, um, watching the video as I was editing and I'm like, you don't like the formula. Why are you keeping them? So I'm only going to keep Saffron Fire, which is that bright orange, because that's the one I like the most and it did wear really well throughout the day with the two nudes, even though I like the colors, I don't love the formula. I would prefer to reach for something else. And even though I like these blotted, I'd much prefer to reach for like um, the MAC Kissable lipstick in a similar tone, because I much prefer that formula. So I'm getting rid of these. These are hard because I like the effect of them, but I am getting rid of Brandy. If this looked like the swatches, uh, on me I would totally keep it but it looks it looks too gothic on me and it's not my vibe so even though I like the formula brandy is going I'm keeping the other three um, because the brights are fun and I like the nude two tinted lip glosses do I need two no I don't I'm getting rid of the pixie one um, even though it's got vitamin C I like the look of the benefit one more all right with these guys I've decided to get rid of two uh, I'm getting rid of stripped even though it's a nice nude again it's a drier liquid lipstick and I have better formulas and I have nudes in better formulas. So Stripped is going and so is American Doll because it's a classic basic red. Uh, when I did film this, I'm like, do I have? I've, I know I have a lot of bullet lipsticks in this shade. Do I have many liquid lipsticks? And then I thought of one, I've got a nice MAC one. So yeah, I'm getting rid of these two. The rest of them I really do like and I'm not 100% confident that I have dupes for them. So uh, I'm gonna keep these. I'm keeping 20 which is much better than keeping 30 and I'm getting rid of 27 instead of 17. So that split is a much more comfortable split in my head. Um, I do at the end of this, I would like to get my collection down by at least half. Um, and this is sort of on track for that. I do know there's some months coming up, like possibly this month, where I might be keeping a lot more than I'm getting rid of. But when I'm in a month where I don't like the Bite Beauty lip lipstick formula. I don't love the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, liquid lipstick formula. Even though I like the shades, I don't love, love, love the formula. Why keep them around? And yeah, so this is a better split. Ah, let's go back to the video. All right, so that is my check-in for June. I haven't even picked what category I'm gonna be using in July and we're already on the 4th of July. Oops, a daisy, I'm running behind. So um, I'll make sure I get this up as soon as possible so I can move on to next month. So hopefully you enjoyed that one and I'll get going. But if you wanted to know any of the shades or the products uh, that I mentioned, and if I spoke about them too fast, I will have them uh, listed in order of when I spoke about them in the description box. So um, yeah, all the details will be there. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.